I am Maria Beatriz La Mora, and um, what I am presenting today is a hat hack. If you expect felting and period processes to put a hat together, uh, I'm going to disappoint you. <laughs> but if you just want to make sure that everybody's head is covered appropriately, I'm your gal. We can all do it on the way to an event. As long as it's a two hour trip. So, um, ooh. Okay, I've got a banner here that says my audio quality may be compromised. That may be a delayed a delayed message um if you see in the first picture here um the hats are also totally reversible and i made that because as long as you're going to do a hat hack you never know which one you're going to need what outfit you're going to wear etc cetera, etc cetera. so they are completely reversible it also helps helps hide in the unseemly scenes seams so if we could please thank you so much braun for holding the fort for me <laughs> if we could please progress to the next um page okay um on the right is a young man who walked into my class at an event and he had never even sewn his own buttons on. And he actually made his own hat. It took him a little longer than two hours. But, I mean, he even did this cute little detail of, of you see the, the second color rim underneath it. That was just, I was so proud of him. I could... And he stayed the whole event and wore the hat for the rest of it. It was like a three-day event. He kept the hat on the whole time. He was so proud of himself. I was delighted. And that is, if you look at the page in the middle, that is hat A. Um, Maybe a little bit taller than hat A would be, but that is hat A. Done out of very soft fabrics, so it doesn't look as squared off as top hat A, but it is tap hat A. Also, sort of between hat A and hat A1 are the ones on the right. They are actually um, embroidered. And so that, and the embroidery also stiffens them quite a bit. Uh, that's closer to A1 though, is that they are taller and they need to be stiffer to stay up taller. And we'll discuss that later. Um, but this is so you get an idea of which hat you would like to make today. Um, can we please go to the next page? Thank you. Uh, that hat, a one from the back, that wonderful gentleman's, his lady was in my class. And then they went to... Uh, a competition a couple of weeks later called Revenge of the Stitch. And by choosing her decorations and so forth, she made uh, she made him a Byzantine robe and the hat to match. And she says they kind of got very excited about the hat when he stopped in the middle of modeling and flipped it inside out and then wore the other side in the modeling. They were like, oh my gosh, it's 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 reversible, yay. <laughs> and the little charmer on the right is a friend of mine's grandson that she made outfits for him to come to. Well, look at this child. I mean, this child has no idea that he is growing as he breathes, she, she made this outfit for him. And two weeks later, when she brought him to the event, he could barely put any of it on. Okay, <laughs> She got him in it for that one event and then it was passed off to somebody else. 
but isn't he adorable? I could just pinch his little cheeks. I love that little guy. Okay. Um, and that is also uh, A1. That is A1. It is a taller cylinder. Okay. Can we go to the next page, please? Uh, this gentleman is definitely wearing B, which is almost a cone. And it's made by cutting um, a semicircle piece that you will learn how to pattern in a few minutes. And then it's got a very small top. The difference between the top and the bottom is the top is approximately a third of the a third or less of the entire measurement around the head and that's how you get the cone um and you can't see it very well but this gentleman is from florida so i kind of had to make him this hat it's a brocade i found the remnants of in a thrift shop it is green with pink flamingos on it because i have no reverent bones in my body and he likes it. He likes it. He took the joke with great grace and wears it every time I see him in an event, he's wearing it. <laughs> okay, move on, please. Okay, that you can see the uh, reversible hat a little bit better. Actually, I have it here somewhere. Um, here. Uh, so... And this was made with pre-quilted fabric, two layers of pre-quilted fabric, but it came those two colors on e one on each side. So I had to go with it. <laughs> um, and I will show you how to do that in a few minutes. This one is B2. It is, the top is only a, is about half to two thirds of the bottom circumference. And that's how you get more of the fez shape rather than the cone shape. Okay, if you could please um, move on to the next one. These ladies um, are wearing different shapes. They're actually very, very, the short hat is actually going towards the fez. It is narrower at the top than it is at the bottom. But the one in the middle has a taller version of that, which is closer to what I was wearing in the last picture. But these are also an option if you would like to do that. This is also between B1 and B2. Okay. And the next one, please. Oh. And here we start with construction. Um, if you have you already printed off the directions, yes, no. What culture and times are the hats from? Well, so the hats can be found just about anywhere uh, from Turkey to the Italian Renaissance to, well, pillboxes show up just about everywhere. I've even seen pillboxes in uh, late Elizabethan. Um, and I taught this class and one woman had some silk embroidered with Elizabethan bees <laughs> and it worked just fine. Um, this is not a, oh, they had this hat there. This is pretty much a ubiquitous couple of shapes. Um, I can say that uh, pattern C, I think it's pattern C. Can't remember my numbers anymore. B2. B2 is, I've seen that in Carthage and I've also seen something similar in German Wren just decorated differently 
with with pleating around the bo around it to hide the shape. So you kind of have to look at who are your who and when you are doing and decide which one of these fits in there. I guarantee you there's not too many places one of them won't fit. Um, my The first time I ever taught this, I could only find examples in the Italian Renaissance, but I could find all of them in the Italian Renaissance. So, uh, but since then, yes, definitely. Um, the Fez shape, of course, shows up in the Ottoman Empire and also shows up in... Uh, north africa um the pointed shape also does so that's all i can really say about that whatever shape whatever culture you are doing you have seen i'm sure something like that uh melissa are you wearing in that picture are you wearing a french hood or a pillbox on the back of your head i see that picture and I am intrigued <laughs> uh yes uh that is a French hood um I made it I used the Tudor Taylor the first version of the book for the mm -hmm. pattern I got it on my shelf if you want a close up later on okay great um the uh I have seen the pillbox though on um I think it is the portrait of the Armada dress. I think she's she's wearing a pillbox on the back of her head. Mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth is. Yeah. So this goes practically everywhere, even into the 1940s, tiny with a little veil on the front. Oh, that's adorable. That is just adorable, Melissa. <laughs> Uh, so, has anyone decided which one, which hat, because if there is one in particular that you, that nobody is interested in, I'm all for not demonstrating that one. They all go together about the same way. It's just forming the pattern that's a little bit different. So, uh, is if you could show me in uh, chat and some and and Braun, if you could look in chat and take a uh, stock of who wants to do uh, which shape, um, we'll start with A. Who is inter Is anybody interested in doing A? Lots of A, couple of okay. B one and a B two so far. 1B1 and 1B2. Actually, now we've got multiple B1 and B2, but most people seem to be going with A. All right. I will warn you that if you want to do a truncated hemen, this is going to be, you want to do an elongated B1, it's going to be awfully soft for that. So it doesn't support things like veils hanging from it very well. It The longer you get, because this is not stiffened, it's quilted maybe, but that's not going to support a whole bunch of stuff. So just so you know that you'll have to make, um, you'll have to make other arrangements to get it to act like a truncated henin. Like, um, put some kind of really hard stiffener in it and then it won't be reverse it won't it'd be easily reversible because if it's stiff you can't flip it inside out but okay so we will start with we will start with patterning with a and a1 so cuz they're they're both exactly the same except for the width of the piece so if you get a piece of tin foil okay that will at least 
go around your head with a little bit to fold. All right. And put it where you want to wear it. Some people want to wear it here. Some people want to wear it on the back of their head. With this lump here, wearing it square on the top of my head is, is very difficult. I, I almost always have a problem. So I usually wear it on the back, all right? But either way, you measure it and then you're gonna fold it down like a baked potato, okay? <laughs> so it will stay in place and look at yourself in the picture and see if it is the height you want. Because only, I, I can tell you three inches, four inches, whatever, but it's your head and it's your proportions and that's not gonna be helpful. Okay, make sure that you've got it folded to the point where it's gonna stay on. Okay, if you've got it so that it's really cute, but then when you let it go, it pops right off. You need it a little bit bigger so it can sit a little bit deeper. And when you get to that point, you get, I did, I did say masking tape, right? Once you have the shape that you want, the height, and and make sure that it is for A or A1, that it is straight up and down, okay? For A or A1. If you want it shorter, this is the time to do that, all right? For those of you who are doing B or B1, you're gonna take the same piece, but somewhat taller. And once you've got it fitting your head, you're going to start making darts in the ring to get the curve that you want. I would say, Do it in fourths first and then go in and pleat down. So you see how it's already whoop, curving in a little bit. But this is for B and B1, not for A and A1. I usually, if I'm doing B1, don't want to get it much narrower than two thirds to half of what the bottom is, of the bottom of the ring is. And I'm on delayed connection. Okay. <laughs> Those of you who want to do, who wanted to do B2? Did anybody want, want to do B2, the pie plate one? I counted about four of B2 and four of B1. Four of B2. Okay, I will do B2 in a minute. It's kind of the same, but the amount of foil you use is different. Once, for those of you doing A1, any of the A's, now that you've got your ring, you're going to mark where it stops with your tape. 
So the, the two tapes have to meet, all right? One on one side and one on the other side. Actually, with all of them, you're going to eventually do that. So that when you unfold it, you'll be able to find it. B and B1, you're going to continue pleading in until you are happy with it. Try it on a couple of times. Look at the shape. See if the proportion works for you. When you've got the pleats working for you, you'll go ahead and take your tape and tape the pleats down to solidify them so they will not change shape when you unwrap it again. So if you look at the, if you look at the printout on page two on number three and on page Oops, I'm missing a page. <laughs> Probably still in the printer. I think it's, yeah, it's definitely on page, on the second page, uh, number three shows you that. People who are doing B2, your piece of foil is going to be approximately um, one and a half to two times, excuse me, one and a half to two times around your head, all right? And instead of pleating the, the top to make it conical, you will make the ring I'm going to do this shallower. Hold it. I am doing it shallower because otherwise, if there's too much, it starts to look like a head ruffle instead of a pie pad shaped hat. So now my piece is only about this wide. All right. And I'm going to fold it down again, but not so it fits me. It's definitely too big. Can go all the way down like a necklace now. And now I'm going to pleat the bottom in so that the darts will slowly make the bottom fit my head. All right, I've now made this too small for my head. It would be small for a reg, it would be the regular size for a regular head. I have a huge head, All right? What's gonna happen is when you tape them down and unfold it, you will get a crescent. Now, those of you doing B2, the crescent it will be proportionately wider at the top than at the bottom. Those of you 
doing B1, the crescent, and I've already started to assemble this, but the crescent is wider at the bottom than at the top. Does that make sense? Okay. So you tape it in place, marking where your seam lines are going to meet. You tape all the, all the pleats down because they're not going to open again. You're trying to get a crescent shape. You don't need to be stitching all those pleats. That's just to make the flat shape. Those of you doing the straight pillbox, you have made the ring to fit you. Give yourself about two fingers ease because as you stitch it up, the thickness is going to take up some room. All right. And then you're going to put that ring for the top of it flat down on your um on your foil and you're going to trace out like a cookie that would fit the bottom so if this is if this is your foil you're going to do that it doesn't have to fit into the bottom it has to be close to that but it is going to need seam allowance so it's got to be around it with maybe half an inch extra around, maybe, to be safe even three quarters of an inch around the circle that will be the top, which is your ring turned over. Have I made myself clear? Yes. Okay. Ooh, and spiffy. <laughs> it's Sigrid, and my painter's tape is not wanting to stick. To, my my painter's tape is not wanting to stick to my foil. So life is getting kind of entertaining. But uh, oh, pickles! <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. It's my because... choice of materials, and I I want to show you something that's very amusing. Give me just a second. Come here, my baby. Oh. So um, you are causing me to match my kitty. Yes. Um, I once used, my very first one, I used something similar, turned it upside down, and then fiddled with it to make my very, very first hat. <laughs> Great minds think alike, my dear. <laughs> Can you review again? Um, how you calculate the size of the of the top lid. Which one are you doing? Um, whichever one. Um, the, They're the different basic... for different ones. Okay, let's start with the pillbox, the A. The pillbox, it's simply put the ring down, put the ring down on it. And if your head like mine is more oval than circular, Go ahead and bend it a little bit so it's more oval than circular. You know, BFD, it's going to look good on you. Okay. And, and, and then and you, you put it down, okay? You put it down, the hat down with the ring, and then you're literally going to trace around it the, what the, the circle that it makes, and then you're going to make sure that you add at least half an inch, if not three quarters of an inch seam allowance to that. Okay, and with B, how do you calculate it? Pardon me? With B. With B? Okay, with B, if you are pleating it down, you've got the ring that fits your head and however taller you are getting, you want to pleat it down to about a third of what 
the ring at the bottom of your head is. Okay, I mean, I've got your that. head. You want if you're doing uh if you're doing B1, you want to pleat it down to approximately two thirds. Okay, I've got that part. Uh, now, uh, uh, but once you've got your your sides, um, yes. How do you get the top of the uh, of the B style? You turn it over, and you're gonna that cookie has to fill in the ring. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna turn the top over onto the foil and make your pattern piece by tracing whatever that became. Okay, thank you. Yes, Got and it. then you have to remember to add seam allowance to it, right? Okay. Always, yeah. So, and I would suggest because it's rounded that although it can be done with half an inch, your first time anyway, you may wanna go three quarters of an inch because it you want to be able to clip it to turn it so it's not all wobbly inside. Make sense? Definitely. Yeah, after you after you've done this a couple of times, you can get stingy with the seam allowance. <laughs> Yeah, I've made a lot of hats. I'm I'm just trying to learn a new technique. Thank you. Yeah, this this technique is uh yeah, is totally the Bambi needed to figure out how to do it in a campground <laughs> or or riding in the back of a bus on the way to an event. <laughs> so My husband looks at me and says, only you could get a bunch of people to wear tinfoil hats on camera and enjoy it. I definitely thought about that and was giggling my little head off that, that Beatrice was making me wear a tinfoil hat today. There you go. Yes. Definitely did. Yes. <laughs> okay. You got to keep the space aliens out. Pardon me? You got to keep the space aliens out. Yes, we do. <laughs> space aliens don't get to be fashionable like us. <laughs> of course, now there's the fun part of using my scissors to cut the fabric after I've cut the foil and then the paper. Actually, do not. The foil... When I was a little girl, back when most of you were not even a twinkle in your daddy's eye, um, we were taught to keep our sewing shears sharp by every after every grand project cutting tinfoil. That was that was a good thing. I am proud of myself, my my oval that I drew apparently is very, very close to equal sided. I am, I'm very impressed. <laughs> I am very impressed. All right, now. Because right. my head isn't equal sided. <laughs> well, and I had to chop a few inches off the top of my hat and. Oh, yeah, well, you know, and that's perfectly normal. Cause as you look at it, you look at it and go, okay, these proportions do not suit me. All right. Yeah. You're going to get a yeah. out of this um, too. You said canvas like fabric. The only canvas like, like fa fabric I have? Yes. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And, you know, um, the other thing is, occasionally I fall in love with a piece of fabric that has no, um, that does not, it won't even become close to having the body I want to be able to hold it up. 
So I do three layers and keep one inside. When that, like, I fell in love the other day with the silk cover of a pillow that was embroidered. Excellent. Yes. And so I ended up doing three layers and the the inner layer is an upholstery fabric that is simply frightening. I, I have no idea what it's made of or if it's going to melt if it comes anywhere close to anything. But um, it's so stiff, it almost sounds like like uh, cardboard. <laughs> but yes, red embroidered over pink, I, I was horrified. Um, the people who are doing B2, are you okay? Yes, all right. The next step, if you have your two pieces now, your piece that encloses the head and the lid, is you are going to cut yes, dear. one of each yeah. out of each um, fabric. Okay, when you can. Um, so, and so you need two contrasting fabrics so you can keep track of it. So um, you will need to pin and cut out remembering seam allowance. Add some if you don't remember if you put it on. It's always easier to cut it back. Adding seam allowance to um, both of them. And on the ends of your straight piece or your crescent, make sure you add like an inch on each side because there will be some hand sewing and turning and it's a lot easier to grab if there's more than less. What was the seam allowance amount again? Okay, under normal circumstances, a half an inch is enough, but the two ends of that crescent Okay, here. The two ends of this crescent, let me pull the pins out so you can see it. Wally? Okay. The two ends of the piece that's going to go around your head you want to add a bit more seam allowance, like maybe an inch at each edge because there will be hand sewing involved here and it's much easier to tuck if it is more than less. So this can be, this can get away with half an inch, but this, and it's folded, but this, needs to be an inch on each edge. Yeah, this is a very strange shape, but you'll see why in a little bit. <laughs> um, did I make myself clear, dear? Laisha? Yes, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. I'm not always sure, so please, you know, if you say that's clear as mud, I'll try another way. <laughs>
Nope. You need to do that way. And once you have cut your either two or three layers, like I said, some of us, like with this one, I just was going to have to have another layer because this was way too soft to stand up. I have a question on your fabric choices. Yeah. Since this is a soft hat, um, you also but mentioned you also not mentioned that soft. You, yeah, you also mentioned um using upholstery fabric and a lot of upholstery fabric sometimes has a like a plastic lining on the other side, on the back side. Yes. So we want to avoid that, I presume, or otherwise I our would, heads I are going to sweat. Exactly. I, I would. Now, I will say that a lot of those with the rubberized backing. Yes. Um, if you're will, if you in love with that fabric and you really, really want to wear it, um, you can experiment with, you know, washing it and then throwing it in the dryer on really, really hot. And a lot of times that rubberizing will crumble off. It means a big mess in the dryer to clean up, but. <laughs> I wonder if you could use an old iron and like put put it hot um, with some maybe paper towels or something between so the rubberizing would collect on the paper towels, melt onto the paper towels. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have an old iron that I use for craft specifically, yeah. so I don't mess up what I'm, this you is, know, my clothing. This is my craft iron, so. Yeah. Because I could take it to events and work, run it off of my portable. Uh, right. Okay. So I I don't know. I, I, I can only recommend what I've tried. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And so, I know the rubberizing might be fine for some people, maybe in a northern winter area, but yeah. I live in Texas. It's humid. Oh, heck no. No. Absolutely not. Yeah. And that's why buckram doesn't work. If we use some of the historical techniques for hat making, buckram, like was used in Europe, doesn't work down here in the south. Because uh, it's too humid. It it'll It falls apart. It wilts yeah it, it, it yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely <clears throat> although um i have known people to use straw mats hmm. and cut the shapes out of straw mats and then with like rubber cement solidify the edge so it doesn't come undone mm -hmm. it doesn't come unwoven and that allows some air to pass through. Without collapsing. Without collapsing. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because okay. you're using the stiffness of the material instead of the stiffness of the glue. Exactly. Right. The glue is only for like doing the edges because you can't hem straw. Right. Or like fray check or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, not fray check. Um, well, I mean, it acts like a fray check. It acts like a fray check. Actually, if it weren't for the weight, I totally recommend uh, hot glue sticks. Yeah. But the silicon weighs a stinking. I once did that with a hat for my five-year-old who really, really wanted this hat. 
and I had to cut everything out of straw and assemble it. I think that hat weighed five pounds by the time I was finished. Can you but, stitch it? Uh, no, you had to stitch around it. Okay. But the, the stuff in it was like in it like a like you would stick a piece of cardboard in. You wouldn't stitch through the cardboard either. Okay. All right. What did I do with this? Pardon me? Uh, sorry, I didn't realize my mic was still on. I was like, what did I do with the pins? I had pins. They were oh. here. <laughs> <laughs> so when it when when it finally gets to that point, uh, um, yeah, I built this hat for my little girl and she wore it proudly all day. She was not taking it off, but I knew she was suffering because <laughs> the hat weighed five pounds on her little head. <laughs> oh, come on. So are is everybody up to cutting their pieces out now? Yes, no. Yes, okay. Now, those of you who have a sewing machine ready to go, there is no reason you can't do some of it with a sewing machine, but some of it really, your only option is by hand. Well, that's a fine mess. Oh, dear. Yeah, my husband. Pardon me, go ahead. I have a, another quick question because Bron is showing some slides that I didn't realize he was doing. Um, we've got the handout, which came delivered in the email. Yes. Is there is there a chance we can get a copy of the slides also? Because I think that gives us. Be, this is this is um, this is being recorded. Okay. So. Um, the, the trick is, if we're recording like this, we're only going to see the slides in the top left like we're seeing them right now. I had to pin it. Well, I, so thought, it would show the slides, up. I thought the slides were all presented in the beginning. They Not weren't? fully all the way through. No, we didn't go through the whole slideshow like it was. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. Like a, uh, like a quick presentation. Oh, okay. Um... Jeepers. I yeah. Brand said he had to step away. I don't know if he's back yet. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. So I okay. I stopped spotlighting it because people wanted to see you, rightly, wanted to see you oh. actually hold the hat up and show things and do things. <laughs> so like I well, stopped spotlighting. Okay, so, so I can, I mean, if, uh, well, if you go on, talk. Actually, yeah. Can you go? So this is the first one with fabric. The other is all foil, right? Yes, I think so. Okay, great. Then we are where we're supposed. Yeah, yeah. 
I've been right. following along. This is my version of sewing, is following along. Yes. Well, um, yeah, I suppose I could send a copy of the slides. Yeah, uh, like if, if, if you are open to it, I can create like a slide deck and you can send it to. I am totally open to it, dear. Okay. All right. Totally open then. to it. Thank you. You are speaking to a complete Luddite and only because Braun came through and saved my little untechnological tuchus. Do we have this? <laughs> you know what I do. Braun is totally my hero. <laughs> so um yeah we actually we're still back a page we're not up to this part yet and i wasn't even following along correctly <laughs> yep oh no are. no this is where i left this is where i left it. okay okay that's yeah we're not up to the next part yet no yeah i got overexcited as <laughs> as they as they say a picture is worth a thousand words you know um it all depends on your learning style. I found that I needed to make these because there were people like you who do better with the picture, the static picture in front of them. I don't. Yeah, I, I'm visual. Yeah, I had to, in fact, to be able to remember how to describe it to people, I have to be doing it in my hands. <laughs> which is really sad <laughs> so when you have your pieces cut out you want to sew this together first before we put the top on no well eventually yes but the first thing you do after you've got all the pieces cut out is you get right sides together of the long pieces ah okay yeah, no, we are, this is not, we're, so this is modular construction as opposed to bag lining. Ah, so we're, okay. Yeah, so we're going to construct each set of pieces, you know, we're going to construct this set of pieces, then we're going to construct the cookie, and then we're going to put it together. Ah, okay. If if you how do you make it reversible with the That's how you make it reversible because you you very carefully put your edges together. When you put the cookie so, to the I will I will cheat and show you ahead of time. Um <laughs> I'm sorry because I've I've made bucket hats before and I make purses and you know in medieval clothing, but I, I sew everything. So I'm just I'm trying to visualize how the seams would be in. Uh-huh. So, um, I don't know if you can see this clearly or not. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. I started one. Okay. I try to have things in all stages of production so I could show you stuff. All right. So, this hat is going to be sort of like a B2. I think you're a little delayed. Okay, this is sort of like a B2. Okay, I haven't put the the cookie in yet, right? Okay. But first you sew the long sides of it, okay? So you're going to sew this end this side and this side, the long sides. You are going to leave this open like a tube, okay? Oh, okay. It does not become a bag. It becomes a tube. Then gotcha. you reach in and so usually the this heftier of the two pieces of fabric if you have to make a choice. You go ahead and sew it along the sewing. Then you open it up. Whoop. 
Whoops. Well, good thing it's red. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you know it's yours as you bled on it oh yeah you also know it's yours when you bled on it and your spit removes the blood because your own spit will dissolve your own blood off of a garment don't ask me how i know you're not ready for that so then we get to pinning it down and you're going to slip stitch it closed on this side i just confused you didn't i i saw you grab your head <laughs> oh I, I had a scratch <laughs> oh okay so but you're, you're on a little bit of delay you're okay. you're you're choppy so i'm like all right i'm trying to see what you're doing um Oh, here we go. Okay. So then it's pinned under. And that's why I said you needed an inch so that you had room to tuck it and then slip stitch it shut. All right. And then it's going to be a total mop. Now, sometimes if you have the, if one fabric is stiffer or heftier than the other, you may need to slip stitch the edge too to keep it from rolling. Or there are other things you can do, but you start with that and then we're gonna slip stitch the top in. But this is already, right? We're gonna slip stitch like to like on either side. And then you've got it. Okay. All right. So you got ahead of me, girl. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a fat. I cut no, things no, out no, fast. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just glad I thought ahead and made a couple of half made pieces. <laughs> no, it's just like I, I made my wedding gown, you know, 25 years ago. For, I made it with the silk brocade. It was like $1,500 for the silk. And yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I <I'm>, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why you can only get a, to a certain point with this on the machine. Got it. Yeah, and the rest is, is slip stitching. Is everybody okay? So, how many have got all their pieces cut already? Okay. Nobody. That's fine. Close, <laughs> but not quite. Okay, that's fine. 
I don't want to move too fast. And it's not like we don't have, you know, time. I'm uh, not at my usual space. And so I'm trying to do this on my lap, which gets a little interesting. Yeah, yeah, totally understood. Remember, I've done it in the back of a car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I suppose I should rename this class quick and dirty so you know what to expect. <laughs> it would help if I had a pair of scissors that would cut this other show, right? Um, oh, yeah. Let's uh, see what um, I can do for options. <laughs> A quick bit about the embroidery. Um, I have yet to embroider any of my hats and that's because uh, I cheat. <laughs> I go ahead and find upholstery fabric that doesn't call for a whole bunch. But when I do like, I'm holding one right now that I made a couple of years ago and I had nothing except polar fleece to line that sucker with and it looks like wool from a distance so I'm going ahead with it but it's a little boring so I found some fabric the other day that is um it it looks like a border print but it's actually a border brocade so it i could cut it into strips and i'm now pinning it on so i can slip stitch it on here and it'll look like i embroidered the base when i didn't because something in me just didn't want to sit there and try to embroider polar fleece i don't know funny like that That can all be done after the fact.
How we doing, folks? Okay. Oh, honey, that's fine. That's just fine. It'll be recorded. You'll be able to follow along afterwards. And if you got any questions, email me or find me on Facebook. I'll talk you through it. Did you print off the um did you print off the directions? Helwig? Helwig? I lost you. Oh sorry. It's Hewlett. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know this class is it's impossible to do this class in an hour. I, I made that mistake the first time I taught it. Okay, so for the, the rest of you who I am sure are, look, I see people sewing already. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! If your sewing machine is near you, the long, the long seams go like patooey on the sewing machine. Um, and you will be doing the two long sides and then you will also be doing, where is it? Did I drop it? Uh -oh. No. And then the cookie, you will go around the cookie sewing and leave, make that like a bag, leaving maybe, what, two inches so that you can turn it, okay? Again, right sides together, and you're going to sew around the cookie so you can turn it. I've already turned this one and slip stitched it shut. No, it's not a perfect round. Yeah, it's okay. They'll never see it. And if they do, they're way too close for us to not have been introduced. 10 foot rule. 10 foot rule, you got it. This whole hat is on the 10 foot rule. <laughs> I'm kind of curious as to how this one's gonna turn out because like I said, I found a pillowcase a silk pillowcase at a uh, at a store, and it is it's embroidered along the edge, and I had to have it. I had to have that embroidery because I will never embroider a hat, <laughs> but this was just too cool. Um. So we'll see what we get out of it. Question, are we leaving both of the short sides on the tube open or only one? Both sides are left open. Okay, thank you. Both sides are left open. Thanks for asking that because I was about to do it wrong. Pardon me? 
thanks for asking about the uh, leaving the both sides open because I was about to do that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Maria Beatriz, I yes. have, I have an a lot. I have a truncated hannon. <laughs> so you can't see it, but that's the stabilized fabric. So I'm okay. getting okay. But um, it'll have two layers of the stabilized fabric. So I will I will take you photos, and you'll see it at KSF because I have yes. to I have to impersonate somebody. So. <laughs> Right. I will be at KSAF. All right. So there is my truncated hennen. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do with duct tape and aluminum foil. I'm telling you, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's go cut fabric. Okay. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, I taught this class in a campground about a year and a half, two years ago. And this one lovely young lady got to this part. And she looked at me and she said, well, wouldn't this just be faster with a serger? <laughs> and I said, why, yes, yes, it would. Have you got enough for everybody? <laughs> yeah. And so she took it home and finished it on the serger, except I never got to see it. And I really would have liked to have seen it. Because she picked some really cool fabrics. But this I is... made my life more complicated, Beatrice, by adding a third layer in the middle. And so now I have to actually calculate right sides to which right side to the other right side. Okay. The way you do that is you get the two outer ones right sides together. And then you put the middle fabric on the outside and on the wrong side of one of those. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. I've made these mistakes so you don't have to. Repinning now. Do we need seam allowance on the bottom edge? Pardon me? Do we need to put that half inch of seam allowance on the bottom edge? I would. Okay. I would. Because um, 
if you don't, it might be too shallow for your head from, from where you measured it. You can always, in a pinch, if you think it's too deep after you've done it, you can always literally go along that seam and fold it up a little bit and slip stitch it if you think it's it's too deep, but it's really hard to fix it the other way. That's when you add the trim, the fancy trim border a little further down from the fabric than was expected. Yeah, tried that. It did not work on my woolly head. It might work on a smooth head, but it did not work on mine. <laughs> Those bits are together, these bits need huh? to be together. I know in my heart of hearts, I missed something. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oops. Oops. <laughs> what do you need? Uh, it's more to the fact that I was trying to decide on some right sides to right sides, and I'm going to be very, very grateful that my fabric doesn't actually have a right side. Oh, there you go. Because um, the fancy fabric that I want to put on the outside was a very narrow width of fabric. Oh, yeah. And so I have to do it in two parts. But what I hadn't calculated for is that uh, my hat isn't exactly flat on top. And so one of these edges is not the same as the other edge by about half an inch but which is great because it just means my hat sits different you know yeah, um, my, mine is going to do that mine's going to peek in the front and that was just so i could get the embroidery going around the corner mm -hmm. <laughs> which is the only way i could get it to fully go around my head so yeah i totally get that Some fabrics are going to insist that you clip to turn it because they're some of them are very forgiving and some of them are not. Like the silk isn't at all troubled by it, but the upholstery fabric, yeah, man, it's got issues. Are we the last class for the day, Braun? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, do you think it would hurt somebody's feelings if we ran slightly over? Oh my God, people are so busy. I don't know. I, I, I would say no. Okay. So once you start sewing, you're doing the two curved edges? Yeah. And then the sides are open. The sides are open. It's a tunnel, not a bag. So now that I got this piece, I have to slip stitch this closed. And then yes. this, I have to slip stitch one side. It's uh, no, no. Instead of slips, 
before you slip stitch one side, before you slip stitch it, you're going to literally put it together and do a straight stitch down the seam allowance on the inside. Okay, it gets closed with a ooh. Wait a minute. Okay, so I can do so like in here on the the tube, I'm gonna sew one side with the machine. To itself. To itself. To itself. And then I could slip stitch the purple. Over it. it. Yes. Over it. All right. Yes. And then see how this one is? Mm-hmm. Ooh, delay, delay, delay. Here yeah. <laughs> okay, see? So okay, the yeah. The quilted one is stitched, and then the other one was just slip-stitched over it. Got it, got it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, nuts. How we doing? Checking in. Okay. <laughs> Catch two first two bits together so that I have a whole bit. Yay! I think I got to make it a little bit tighter because it's fallen down off my head. Yeah. It's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's easier to take it in than to let it out when there's nothing there. This was before you slip stitched the, it closed, right? Correct. I didn't do that yet. I hate hand sewing. <laughs> oh. I got it's really bad. I got I got really bad arthritis. So yeah. the sewing machine's my friend. I do everything that I can and then probably stuff I shouldn't. <laughs> if you can figure out a way to take the last two steps of hand sewing out, 
please let me know. Because I, I know there are many more people who feel the same way, and I just don't know how to help them. Uh, well, let me let me take a look and see what I can do here. <laughs> Ouch. Well, this little puppy just slid all over the place. Boing. How are people doing? Stabbing themselves. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's that. All right, why did one of these grow? <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, that happens sometimes. Just tuck it under. <laughs> it's treacherous. <laughs> Tulare, I knew a Tulare way, way back. Is this, the, are you the same one? Maybe. Tulare the well prepared up from Storvik. Yeah. Hi. Um, hi. <laughs> are there steps after attaching the top? Nope. That's pretty much it, unless you want to decorate it. I am in the process of putting decoration on one now but so that it goes on both sides if you're decorating only one side you don't want to stitch it through to the other side so this is another one that i'm decorating this was originally pre-quilted fabric and it doesn't quite fit underneath my bar baronial coronet. So I'm putting these buttons on it for my baronial coronet. And then I'm putting trim on the bottom because I had it. <laughs> if I have it, I'll use it. Um, let me think. Um, This one that I'm building now, because it's pre-decorated, because I used that pillowcase, is not going to be, I'm probably not going to put anything more on that, but I might. I might, like, I don't know, pearl the little flowers or something, because I've got the pearls, but technically that's it. Um, where's the first one I showed? Um, if I did it on this one, if it decides to roll on you and it won't stay completely flat at the edge, you can run a really tiny stitch at the very edge. To keep it from rolling. And I have this one that needed that stitch that I haven't done yet because the fabric was just way too soft. But I need to both stitch down in the ditch this way and then stitch the edge on this one so it won't roll because this side is a satin and is just way too soft to hold its own with the brocade on the other side. This, by the way, is a cross between an A and an A1. This one is straight up and down. And half a yard or even a remnant of, oh, my hairpin got caught in it. Whoops. Um, is enough. Um, I really like the pre-quilted fabrics for giving body without so much stiffness that you can't flip it back and forth. So, and you can get enough out of, you can sometimes get enough out of a pre-quilted placemat from like Dollar Tree. You can get enough to put in one half. Um, so, um, if you need to go, but you, if you need to find me on Facebook, write to Maria Beatriz and you will find me, Maria Beatriz La Morra, and you will find me.
And if the rest, if everybody else is okay with keeping going, I am here for you. Okay. Um, if, if we're allowed to stay on. <laughs> Glad to hear it, Melissa. <laughs> yeah, Foyle, Foyle is our friend. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, I'd been trying with paper before and it was just like nothing would ever no. settle quite right. No, because it won't hold its shape. It's like paper fitting. It's like paper patterning on your own body. Same problem. Whereas the duct tape trick is great. But of course, duct tape next to your hair is a pain in the head. <laughs> so. Well, I got a question question for you i guess or something if you could say it one more time please um so i just got the the um the top piece sewed shut uh-huh uh so what again is the step i've got the tube now for the side for the a shape okay so what, what's the order you, and process for putting no, it together you then? will Take so show me your show me your tube. Do you have one side where the fabric is sturdier than the other side? They're yeah, both probably the red the side's a little bit stiffer. Okay, then that's the one you want to do because it'll be easier for this to turn the softer side around. So you're gonna put you're gonna make it into a ring, turn it into a ring. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, and then you're going to, um, oh, okay. You're gonna use the burgundy side. So turn it so the burgundy is on the inside of the ring. Okay. Then you're, instead of overlapping, no, you're going to fold it back a little bit so that the burgundy two pieces are together. Like, fold fold the yellow back so you can get to the burgundy. Like this? See? Mm, I have frozen. Wait a minute. Um, you mean fold it back like this around the back side? No, because you're not folding the burgundy, just the yellow. Oh, okay. Just Like a cuff? Fold yeah. it back like a cuff. Okay. So like that. Inside yes. itself. So you just got the burgundy to put together. Okay. okay. And then, oh golly. Yeah, I'm on. Okay. Now, do you see in my picture, I've got just the black and the red mm -hmm. is folded back. Mm -hmm. So you're going to sew a seam along just the burgundy from the top to the bottom okay just okay. that then you're gonna go ahead and put it on and make sure that it's the circumference you thought it was it might be a little big you might want to take it in a little okay and then you will push that inside and fold the yellow over it to hide that seam and slip stitch it shut okay so the only really structural seam is going to be the burgundy. The yellow will not be involved in the structural seam. Okay. Does that make yep. sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, that may be one thing that I actually diagrammed a little bit better yeah. in the paper. I'm not sure. Um. Is it the same for the um the B? Yes. Top? All of them, that part is the same in the ring. Okay, that the tube gets assembled the strongest part first, and then you slip stitch the other part over it. Okay. 
Yes. Okay. So far, so good. You pinned it. So stitch away, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Sure. Hey, chicken, you're just bulking along there. Yeah. So now you're going to slip stitch that cookie. Same side to same side. So you're going to do it twice, right? You're going to slip stitch the lavender to the lavender and then flip it over and stitch the other color to the other color. You might want to pin it into place first. I'm trying a ladder stitch on my, my thicker fabric. And I'm wondering if I can get away with just one attachment. I'll find out. Let me see. So. Um, coming. I right. would only because if you don't do the other side at least a little bit, it will want to roll back and let you see both sides. Mm. All right. And we'll see how it turns out. If you don't, if you don't want it to be um, reversible, then yeah, one will hold it. Okay. Um, one will hold it. But if if you want it to be completely reversible, mm -hmm. that last bit is kind of okay. Yeah. Yep. That's looking great. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna have to drop off at five thirty, but I can see how it finishes from here. Yes. Thank you. It's great class. Oh, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. And you might somewhere have like it's this glorious pin with a feather to put on it. Especially if you're doing ottoman right up the front. So Bran, Bron, sorry, mispronouncing of everything today. Bron, are you available? to pop over to the next slide yes next slide or next class Voila. the next slide and I'm then the, the, the slide after that i'm the slide master yes there you go there you go you see where it's been closed for slip stitching on the on the side piece side pieces and then if you could please pop over to the next slides ta-da there we are Ouch. Uh-oh. Bambi, I'm going to have to slip out and feed all of the cats. They're circling the wagon. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, I want to live tonight when I go to sleep. Yeah, but, yeah, I, I understand. I understand. Oh, this has been wonderful, and I will see you at KSAF, okay? Yes, yeah, see you at KSAF. See you at KSAF. Hats. <laughs> with hats. Yes, with hats. All right. Thank you. This is wonderful. Thank you for coming.
All right, fine. That is the third time that my thread has unthreaded itself. I think it is time for a new one. Mm. Do you have one of those fancy needles that are like popping in to thread it? Mm, I own those things, but are the, is that what I managed to be able to grab? Oh, heck no. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, I was taught after like 50 years of sewing, I was taught to thread a needle. You do not wet the thread. You wet the eye of the needle and then you allow the wicking action to pull the thread through. Oh, I will have to try that because yes. between my eyesight and my hands, hand sewing sucks. <laughs> yes, threading needles. But this, so I was sewing, I was like an overhire stitcher for the Carolina Ballet for a while. And oh. when I brought this tip in, they all looked at me like, oh, you're nuts. They were all using it in a week. <laughs> all right. I stay. Thank you, Drifa. Look at you. I just, yes. I pinned it, but I think I, I'm going to need like my magnifying glass and my bright light to sew this. And I'm like, yes. so I think this is going to take me a little did, while, but thank you, you so did much. Make, um, so it, it's such different colors, you know, the front and the back, it'll be easier to see that you're getting only the black or only the lavender. So yeah, now that that'll, that'll definitely help. Of, of colors to do that. I was debating using some chicken fabric, but I was like, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll save that one. I would have. <laughs> Are you kidding? I, you I got what I made from. You saw what I made for my friend with with the flamingos. Oh no, I know, but I wanted to try this first. Oh yeah, before I course. went and cut, you know, yes. something. So this is just pretty chicken basic fabric. Yes, of course. Maybe I can wear it to mud thaw. <laughs> So yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, and another little trick. Mm -hmm. Um at like Walmart, they have those faux fur uh um neck rings or the faux fur uh hair bands or neck right. rings. <laughs> if you're wearing it to a cold event, you can pin that sucker to the edge of that. Ah, I also have, um, no, I have a couple of yards of some fake fur that, that I got because I was in the process of making a Viking jacket, um, but so you just probably put that ring, on that. A ring, ring just... that you slide on and put, and then in the summer, you just take it off. You just don't wear it with it. You just don't make wear it with it. Make it a hat band. Bingo. There you go. Good idea. But well, awesome. Thank you so much. This was great. Thank you for coming. Have a good night. You too. I'm trying to remind myself that this is a hat and it's internal construction and the stitches do not have to be that neat. Just make No, them. they don't. You can go back and make the edge nice and pretty later if you want to. Bingo. And if you're going to put trim over it anyway, you know? Well, the likelihood is if I wear a hat, it's likely popping in my turban anyway. So who's going to see what? Exactly. My, um, another place I used to, um, stitch as a helper was the Washington Ballet. And they had a needle pointed sign over the sewing machine bank that said it may look like from the orchestra pit, but they'll never know from the 17th row. <laughs> Oh, 
And the orchestra pit is getting paid to sit there. <laughs> well, no, the <laughs> orchestra. Yeah. Exactly. As long as, you know, you don't stick the dancer and they don't, you know, come after you to beat you senseless with a point shoe, you're good. Hang out with drag queens and you'll learn about 15 minute stitching. Oh, <laughs> hang out with drag queens and you'll learn about hot glow. <laughs> hot glue and when stitch witchery came out in the 17 in the 70s my drag queen buddies were like unstoppable with an iron and a seam allowance <laughs> Boo -boo. How you doing? What? My 90-pound service dog just came and complained that I'd been in here too long, but <laughs> I'm also trying to convince the little stinker that, sh you know, She's 10. She's retired now. She can't boss me around all the time, but. Lifetime of bossing, you know. Oh, I know. I to break that habit. Oh, and I mean, she saved my life twice. I was going to say, and apparently you need bossing. Yes, <laughs> but not when I'm home. Well, I'm I'm gonna head out, but uh, thank you so much for your class. I've got a pointed hat now. Oh, oh, oh look at it, lovely! Looks, oh, that is adorable, and the colors. Oh, I love the colors. This is very fun. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon. Yes. Have a good evening. You too. Bye. Ah, oh, let's see, where is the, I know I had more thread. Oh. Um, and my glasses are not on my head. You little glasses. Well, I found the other pair. What the heck? <laughs> Check in the hats that you put on, ma'am. In case they Smarty were on your boots. head, but aren't now. Smarty boots. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, one edge. Yeah. Wait a minute, one edge? One edge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got so far. Now I got another edge to go, then I got a round to go, then we get some turning. Oh. Curse of the habit of taking teeny tiny stitches. trying to break it it only works so well well yeah and you know if it makes your heart happy it's your hat <laughs> oh 
couch. <laughs> what my? Yeah, I keep saying that. Um, I clearly haven't done hand sewing in a while, and um, my psoriasis has killed anything remotely like a callus on my fingers. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Yep, that's my, welcome to my world. <laughs> my hands refuse to make any calluses at all. Yeah. To start with. I think part of my problem is I didn't used to have this issue. And so, you know, I am accustomed to operating with things that make build calluses, not how, hey, I keep stabbing yeah. myself. Why do I keep doing that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> staying alive after 25 is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of things come out of the woodwork to attack you. Hey, babe. Not quite. We're getting there. And I don't have the proper, uh, the proper um, uh, tricks for operating with uh, age-related farsightedness because I spent my entire life being nearsighted. <laughs> I did too. The and then I felt thing like cataracts. Is... And then they worked on my eyes and all of a sudden I could see across the street and I could not see what I was sewing in my hand. Yeah, exactly. The, they did that to me when they first gave me glasses when I was nearsighted because I was so nearsighted that um, the, it, uh, they corrected it and they're like, I, you know, they put them on my face and the table there had reading material in it. I'm like, oh, I can't read. And they're like, look across the street. Can you see the tree? Yeah. Does it have leaves? Yes. So I can't read. <laughs> yeah, really. Like they think not being able to read is not a problem. Come on, people. <laughs> I don't think you understand. I don't care whether leaves have trees. Or trees have leaves. Sorry. There we are. Actually, I liked it the other way better. <laughs> So my um, yeah that ha that happened to me too, and um, then I discovered uh cheaters, and at the Dollar Tree you can get them for a dollar twenty five a piece, and I took a twenty dollar bill in there one day, and I have a pair in every room, <laughs> and in my glove compartment, and in my feast basket, and. <laughs> Yeah, I've been buying dad magnifying glasses, and the the last time I went out to examine objects, I realized that uh, I need I need to figure out how to make space in my exam kit because I was lucky. The last space that I went to actually had uh, a magnifier attached to their lamp, but that isn't always the case. No, it's not. <laughs> um. Because a lot of them tend to be very young college kids, you know. And, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. But these these came from, these came, excuse me, from Dollar Tree. And literally, I mean, honestly, I got 16 pair for 20 bucks. Uh -huh. And they are situated everywhere. Oh. I have, I actually have one in my glove compartment. I have several pairs that reside in each of my shopping bags so I can read the labels on groceries. Uh-huh. I mean, oh yeah. I have taken to actually using my phone for a lot of that. Take the photograph, zoom in. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> and then not only have I blown it up big enough I can read it, if I want to keep it, I've got one. 
Yes, exactly. I'll get there eventually. I thought I was so smart. I wanted to have a straight scene. And so I put masking tape on it. This is like my second project ever. And now I can't get the masking tape off. Um, okay. Masking tape is made of paper. And if you have a washable thing, just go with it and finish it up. Okay. And then wash it and it'll dissolve. Sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. It may take a couple of washings, but it will dissolve because masking tape is paper. Which is one of the reasons I chose it for this project instead of cello tape. My husband has taken Prince's bossy dog out, so they're out walking. Oh, come on. Here we go. Yes, Anne? No, it's just me saying ow again. Oh, <laughs> okay. Because, of course, you know, I wanted the stiffness of the canvas. Really, I did. <laughs> um, do you have a pair of needle nose pliers near you? No, and that would take a lot longer to do. So. But it means you're not, when it's coming through, you've got something other than your fingers to grab the point with. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm guiding the point is my problem. Oh, okay. It's telling me when I've got my point all the way through all three layers of fabric and uh, periodically I push it further than I should. And yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That and my stabilizing pins. I keep hitting my stabilizing pins. Oh, well, there's that. Yeah. You know, one of these days, I'm going to figure out how to do this with those cute little clothes painty things uh -huh. that I got, but I haven't figured that out yet. A set of safety pins would have done me some good, apparently. Oh, yeah. Didn't think of that. Okay, and da, 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 da. oh shoot! Here we go.
oh, this cookie. Oh, what was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> this cookie's really too big. Too big. Okay. Threading the needle works a lot better if you put the eye and where the thread is. <laughs> okay, let's see if that fits. That's better. Not great, but it's better. Okay, that ought to do it. All right, two sides done. Yay! Two done, sewn together, slip stitched, and the cookie's done too. Ooh! Hey, Papa. Hello. Oh. Which time do you want to eat? We probably have about. 15 minutes before the zoom meeting is going to end okay thank you we'll we'll look at trying to go 10 i think everybody can at least be finished enough to get it on their heads in 10 with dropping the cookie in at least on one side no that's on yay <laughs> look at you Yay! It's a little loose, but it's meant for my husband, so. Oh, fantastic. Figure it's perfect. And cooking. Fantastic. I love Thank the you. color, too. Thank you. It's so leftover I, I from some the, other projects. Hey, it's perfect. Back kitchen. <laughs> Kitchen, okay. So I got the around the head part put together. Oh, the top is very nice, Michael. A lot bigger. Pardon me. The top feels like it's a lot bigger than the hole on it top of the head. I, and mine is mine is because okay. um, it's really possible that you do take enough of your seam allowance. Mm -hmm. just but me. just tuck it in. No. Okay. And then you can make up for it when you drop the cookie in. Just okay. just tuck the seam allowance in a bit more. And and you don't have to open it up to go back in. And that'll actually give it a bit of strength around the edge in uh, in the top. Okay. That sounds Does good. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. I'll uh, just kind of tuck it back in on itself. Uh-huh. Exactly. And just sort of make exactly. a second a second wider seam allowance with it tucked up inside. Uh-huh. That's it. Okay. Awesome. Well, well, you look very you're going to look very grand. Yeah, I'm very, looking forward very... to this. This will be fun. So thank you so much for teaching the class. I guess I'm gonna sign off now since we're almost done and keep stitching away here. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming. Hope to see you sometime in your hat. Yeah, likewise. All right. Let's get those two out of the way. Oh, wonderful. Owen, how you doing, honey? Uh, I think I might have just finished the tube. All right. So, yeah, I've never really uh, sewn before. 
And so I started doing like really small and then I heard Brian talk and I took his advice and made it much bigger. You know, this never really sound before. I am, I am very impressed. Um, so if, we end, if we end before you're done, you can find me on Facebook, Maria Beatriz La Mora. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I'm on a lot. And if you need extra, a bit, a bit of extra coaching, I, I'm, I'm there. I okay. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I just realized my cookie is inside out. <laughs> oh well. Oops. Oops. Okay, so just make it a jester hat. Well, it is, it's 10 minutes to six. So really I do, if any of you need to rattle my chain on Facebook, uh, Maria Beatriz La Mora, I think you see it spelled there. I'm not sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I found it. And, um, and, and most importantly, send her pictures of your done hats. Oh, golly, yes. Please send me pictures. This is one of the ways I justify <laughs> this to my husband about making poor, nice people put on tinfoil. So <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, but they got a hat out of it, babe. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming. And I'm I'm just so excited with all that you've come up with. This is really wonderful. Bronwyn, are Thank you still there? teaching? Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes, I'm still here. So see you, see you bye. And um, oh yeah. That's another one that I did and ended up leaving my possession. It's on somebody else's head now, and I don't know whose it is. I don't remember. <laughs> and and thank you for coming and Matilde and Janine and Hanya and well it's not done yet but oh but it's there it's coming along oh I love the fabric of course I am a fabriholic I have to admit um and um yes thank you and Owen and thank you so much for coming and like I said, find me on, on Maria Beatriz La Mora and I'll be sure to, to say something. And if you need a hand, if, if I missed a step or something, you know, alert me to the fact and I will fix that. Thank you so Thank much you. again. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.